Hey friends, welcome back to the abandoned chicken house. If you remember from this scenario, uh, I staked this place out for about 24 hours to make sure it was unoccupied. I made my way in and I've started to gather and, and utilize the materials and resources that I've found in here to aid my survival and allow me to get myself home. In this scenario, all of my gear, my pack has been lost. This is a, um, a post-apocalyptic type, uh, type event where people are on guard and fairly unfriendly and I need to keep my distance from them but in this chicken house I have found a plethora of resources and things that I can use to aid my survival and help me make my way back home and let's assume in this scenario that it's I'm a couple days away from uh, from home and I just need to get the things that I might need to get myself there tonight I plan on spending the night here um, in the first episode you saw me collect some water out of a well purify it, purify it by boiling it in my makeshift rocket stove here if you haven't watched that video check it out but now my primary concern is going to be to make some sort of shelter now i'm in a shelter obviously it is safe from rain um, but it is fairly exposed and the walls are wide open, only chicken wire. So lots of wind and it's going to be cool tonight. It's springtime and it's still getting frosty at night, probably somewhere around freezing tonight. So I need to figure out a way to keep myself warm. I could obviously build a fire. I could build a fire in here, but that's not ideal because if I'm trying to keep a low profile, having a flickering flame in here is not going to be ideal at night. I could probably rig up a way to block off the walls here just to kind of, um, I guess, minimize my, my light that's, that's exiting the building so people can see it. But yeah, still, still kind of risky, I think, in this situation. And if I can do it without a fire, that's what I'm going to do. That looks like a sleeping pad if I ever saw one. So there's these great big styrofoam filled metal cased panels that were used for something I have no idea what but look at that insulation I mean that is that is six inches thick easy um, I'm thinking I build an igloo <laughs>
it even fits perfectly. It's funny. It's exactly the right size. Isn't that weird how stuff works out like that sometimes? Essentially what I've done here is create a sleeping bag. So with this, luckily they had all this big thick styrofoam uh, panels in here. And I mean, you can't really ask for better insulation. So by keeping this thing really small, basically just enough for me to crawl in, coffin sized, if you will, um, I've made a sleeping bag and my body heat with it tucked in and covered on both ends is gonna generate enough warmth and heat up the inside. Be nice if this was just a couple inches taller so I could roll over easily, but you know, still not bad. The smaller it is, the better though, for insulation reasons. Um, the smaller I can make it, the easier it's gonna be for my body heat to warm this shelter up. And with it completely closed off, well, not completely, I wanna be able to breathe a little bit. A couple of air holes down the other end. Tyvek on this end, or Tyvek-like material has closed it in mostly behind the camera. And my body heat, will warm this little shelter up and make it much more, much warmer than the outside temperature tonight. And this carpet here, old piece of carpet, smells a little nasty. Might kill me one day, but not today. And if our priorities are not freezing to death tonight, you know, it is what it is. But it's pretty comfortable. I mean, I'm up off of the ground because I'm laying on six inches of styrofoam. I'm laying on two to three layers of carpeting and I've got this panel of insulation right above me and on my sides. Or if I needed to get out in a real big hurry, I would just do that. And I'm out. And that's something else to consider is if I'm spending the night in this building, currently there's only one, yeah, there's only one entrance in and out. The other door is locked. Um, so I would want to have an, a secondary way to get out of this building. And I'm thinking the easiest thing to do would just be to cut, cut a hole in the chicken wire over here on the side. I'm not going to do that because this isn't my structure, but I would cut a hole in that chicken wire over on the side. And then if I needed to get out in a hurry in the middle of the night, whatever, I could just slip right out through that hole and be, and be on my way. Now that I've made sleeping arrangements for the night, I need to start planning my, my exit strategy for tomorrow. I need to be able to take along the materials, the tools and things that I can scavenge here with me and I need an easy way to carry them. And uh, I don't have a pack. This is all the water that I've purified so far, just this one bottle. And my goal is to fill up this, this big jug here. This is that water that I collected out of the well, probably a, a gallon or so. And then I would take this with me because this is an excellent canteen, but um, it's just gonna be really difficult to carry that thing, I think. I'll definitely be taking this along, that's for sure. Now that my water is boiled, I'm gonna let that cool and I'm gonna fill up, fill up my jug. And I'll just be repeating this. Oh no, my jug has a hole in it. Crap. No shortage of jugs. 
apparently we've got an ocean spray fan around here. These jugs will be fine. I guess it'll lift over recyclables or something like that. Hopefully this jug doesn't have a hole in it. Yeah. So I'll just be repeating that process over and over again until I get a full jug of water. And that'll give me at least a half gallon of water. I'm not sure how big this jug is, but at least a half gallon with a good cap that I could take along with me on the road. Found this old blade, this old saw blade, um, and I could probably fashion that into some sort of implement of destruction. That's gonna take a few minutes, but I guess I've got time. It's gonna tear my hands up just sharpening this. I need to put some sort of handle on here. We're starting to get a little bit of an edge on there. I started out with kind of a Scandi type grind, but then got impatient and now I'm turning it. And so it's more of a convex, <laughs> but I think it'll work. It's, it's sharp now. I would not want to get hit, get hit with that. That's for sure. Um, but as far as carving and whittling, it's a pretty, I mean, it'll, it'll do a little bit. I could probably make some shavings and stuff with it but I probably need to find something a little bit finer than this tin grit <laughs> that I'm working with right now. Hey guys, well, thanks so much for watching. I'm Jason Salyer, hit that thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you on the next video. Uh, stay tuned because I'm going to do a couple more projects around here. We'll see you on the next one.